So, you're wondering how to complete an application in LendingPad. Let me show you how step by step. First, we need to log in to LendingPad. When we log in, we open up on the dashboard. From here, we're gonna go to the top menu and click on Pipeline. Once we're in Pipeline, we need to come over and click on Create New Loan. Here, notice that we have several sections. We'll go through them one by one. The first one is General, and here you get to choose your branch. Next is Borrower number one, and here you get to put in your borrower. For our example, we're going to put in Amy America and her email and her mobile phone number. For our example, we do not have a second borrower. However, if you had a second borrower, you go over to borrower number two, fill out the same information, and if they were co-borrowers, you would click on co-borrower. All right, let's keep moving down. We have subject property. So if we happen to know what the subject property is, we can put that information in. If not, we would be putting in TBD. But in our case, we know the subject property. Notice when I put started typing it in, that it found the information and I didn't even have to type all of it. So we're gonna verify all this information is correct. It all looks good. And I could even go ahead and I could even go ahead and validate the address. Now it knows the address is valid. I can pick the property type. All the different property types are here. This one is detached. And the number of units. In my case, this is a one unit. Now I'm going to move over to Terms and Mortgage. And I'm going to try to fill out as much of this as possible. So Amy is purchasing. She's going to do conventional. We do not have an AUS type yet. Um, she is going to occupy as her primary residence. We're going to skip the appraised value and just put in the purchase price. And I know that Amy plans on putting 20% down. When I put in the 20%, it automatically gave me the loan amount. Okay, let's say that I didn't put in the percentage. Instead, I wanted to say that she had planned on putting down $90,000. It would calculate the down payment amount and the loan amount. But I'm gonna go back, as Amy said, she did 20% down. The next line is for credit score, which we don't have yet. We haven't pulled credit. And then the program. So I'm gonna go ahead and select a program, a new modal opens. I'm gonna select a 30 year fixed. And right now my working note rate is 3%. Now if everything on here looks correct, I'm gonna scroll back up to the top and click the save button. The tab refreshes, we get notification that the new loan was created in the bottom right hand side of the screen. And we open up in the loan application info summary. Also notice at the top, you have all the vital information. You have the branch, the status, loan purpose, occupancy, the type, program, loan amount, note rate, qualifying expense for the moment, credit score, LTV, CLTV, HCLTV, um, any AUS findings if they were there, the APR of the moment, DTI, expense, and income. So there's a lot of messing stuff there. Let's go ahead and add it in. So again, we're gonna look at loan application info summary. And we're gonna notice here we have Amy, we have her phone number and email, but let's go ahead and manage borrowers. There's some more information we need to put in here. When we have clicked that, we notice we have Amy's name. We're messing our social, so let's go ahead and put that in. And we're also messing her date of birth. It takes a two digit month two digit date and four digit year. She is a US citizen. We have the number of years in school we can put in here. You can put her marital status, whether or not there are children, and that she is the borrower. Over here in contacts, we have her email and mobile phone number already. Again, her credit scores are empty because we have not pulled credit. We move over to current address and we can add in her current address. We can use the search icon. Again, as we type it in, it will find the address. So here we are, it found our address. So we verify that information is correct. And then it asks for her residency type. So at this address, she is renting and she's been renting there for five years. Her mailing address is the same as the current address. If it wasn't, 
we untoggle that and we'd be able to on a different screen which I'll show you a little bit later add in the mailing address but in this case it is the same and we will leave it so at the top we were going to go ahead and click save changes as soon as we know everything's correct this will take us back to our loan application and folks summary screen we also get notification in the bottom right hand corner that the borrower information was updated and you can see the new information here for Amy America her social security number or current address so let's keep moving down on the screen so here at terms and mortgage we can review the information that we've put in as well as a rent subject property but I noticed down here a proposed housing expense that's missing taxes and whatnot so I want to go ahead and change that. So I'm going to come over here to the edit icon and click on it. When I do, a new modal will open and it lets her view again the terms of mortgage, which all look good. And then over at the subject property, that looks good. But down here at the proposed housing expense, as I suspected, the hazard insurance and property tax are missing. So I'm going to put in any inf missing information here. So for her hazard insurance, update it for with 250 and property taxes updated now all of that information is correct if I need it to and I I could put in any details of transaction that may be missing but I don't have that information quite at this time so I'm going to go ahead and click save changes notice at the bottom right hand side of your screen you get notification that everything was updated if you need to enter any previous addresses or if the place they receive their mail is different from the current address, you would click here on the address tab. And then when you do, you could come in and click on manage addresses. Then you could go through and make any necessary changes here. But we don't have any, so I'm just going to cancel out. Let's move on to the employment tab. In the employment tab, again, I could click on manage employments. And from here, I want to look at Amy's current employer. Let's add that employer in. So I'm going to add in the name of our employer, Cisco Systems. And she is a systems engineer. And I did not grab her phone number at work, but I do have the start date. And her time and line of work has been 10 years. Later, I can come back in and fill in all the other information. But for now, this is what I have. And so I'm going to go ahead and click Save Changes. Notice that you receive notification, the updates remain in the lower right hand corner of your screen. And now we have Amy's work information in there. Let's move on to the next tab, which is income. And in this tab, we can put in all of Amy's income information. So let's click on manage income. To manage income, so we could put in her base income that she earns at Cisco Systems. And this is on a monthly. And if she had any other additional income, we would come down here and click on add income and we can add the different types of income notice that they're all here for you to add in but in our case Amy doesn't have any additional income so I'm going to go ahead and click save changes so notice that puts in her base income has as a subtotal and the total let's move over to expense under the expense tab this is where we're going to have her current expenses, housing expenses. So let's click on manage expenses. Currently, Amy rents, and that rent is $2,500 a month. So we're going to add that to their current expenses. Make sure everything's correct, and then we're going to click on save changes. In the lower head, right hand side of the screen, we have notification that the expenses were updated successfully, and you can see them here as well let's move on to assets so let's click on the asset tab when we do we can see that there's no assets for Amy yet but we're going to add some by clicking on manage assets once we clicked on manage assets you'll notice the new modal opens and we have to add a new asset here we can start typing in the information so let's do Bank of America she has 36,750 if we need to add another asset, we just click Add Asset. Let's go ahead and give Amy a savings account and one more savings account where she's been saving for her down payment. Now we can review, make sure all of our information is correct. And if it is, we click on Save Changes. 
Down here in the bottom right, we get notification that the assets were updated successfully. And you can also see that here in the tab itself. The next tab is REO, Real Estate Own. Let's click there just to look at it. And notice there's no REO set for Amy. She does not have any REOs. She owns no real estate. But if she did, we click on Manage REOs and we go through the same process of adding a new REO and putting the information in there. For now, she doesn't have an REO, so we'll just click Cancel. And we'll move on to the Liability tab. When we click on the Liability tab, you'll notice if you've pulled credit, all the information would be in here and you'd be able to manage the liabilities and inquiries. But we have not pulled credit yet, so we're going to go to the next tab and click on Declaration. So let's look at Amy's declarations. Let's make sure they're all correct. This comes in defaulted. So if the defaults are correct, you're good to move on. If not, we're gonna click on manage declarations and go in and toggle for any yes answers. Also down at the bottom is information for government monitoring. So we met Amy in person and she did not wish to disclose information. However, because we took the application in person, we do need to disclose some information. So was the ethnicity of the borrower collected on the basis of visual or surname? Yes. Was the sex of the borrower collected on a visual or surname? And was the race of the borrower collected on the observation as well? So she did not wish to provide, but we do need to disclose. And we'll scroll down some more. The demogra uh, demographic information was provided by the face and when the date of the application signature. And once we know all this information is correct, we're gonna click on Save Changes. So now all the declaration information is correct and the borrower information was updated, we get the nice notification on the lower right-hand side of our screen. Now we're going to go ahead and scroll down and we're gonna look and see that we have the interviewer details. So let's click the Edit icon to update this information. Here we're gonna say how title will be held. Notice you have several options here for how title will be held. And Amy is going to hold title as a single woman. Our application was taken face to face. Our application date is today. The state is fee simple. And our estimated closing date, she told me would be the 27th, last Friday of the month. So let's go ahead and save changes. Notice that we get confirmation on the lower right hand side of our screen that these critical dates and the status was updated. Let's continue here and look at assignments. Let's click the edit icon for assignments. If we need to assign a loan assistant, loan officer, or loan processor, we can do it here. I'll go ahead and assign myself as the loan officer. Click assign. We get confirmation in the lower right hand side of the screen that that assignment was made and the loan officer would get an email. Under critical dates, and as we have the estimated closing date already, when the application was taken, and when they were put in as a prospect. If you needed to change or update any of the critical dates, you can click the edit icon, a new modal open, and you can put in any of the other information needed to here. So let's go ahead and click save changes. And you'll notice if we have saved any changes that the critical dates and the loan application were updated. We get notification in the lower right hand side of the screen. We have our loan originator information in here, which updated when we added the loan officer. And when we're ready, we can add the lender information by clicking the edit icon. And we can pick a lender within the Learning Pad Network or a lender outside the Learning Pad Network. Let's hit cancel for now. It's not ready for lender. Now you can go over, scrolling back over the top, you can go over to the info summary tab. We have that wonderful at a glance view of all of our hard work. And that's how you complete a loan application in LendingPad. Questions? Feel free to review the material in our support section of the site by clicking on support in the top menu or reaching out to your LendingPad representative. Thank you for choosing LendingPad as your loan origination system.